and good evening and welcome to the Jackson Christian Eagle Show, the most electrifying and entertaining show in school history of broadcasting or anything else. I have two supercharged guests tonight to start out with, and then it gets even better. And you think, can it get better than the head coach and one of the great positive assistants of all time? Yes, it can, because we've got two fine young men that's going to be coming on. And if that's not enough for you, we got Superstat himself. He's not into his Superstat outfit tonight, but he's able to leap tall statistic books with a single bound. Greg Armour will be here a little later. We've got to talk about last week's game. we got to talk about this week's game. We are excited on Jackson Christian Eagle campus. And with me, the head coach himself, the man with the plan, I'm wondering where his crown is or his trophy <laughs> or whatever. We got to bring that up tonight. Now, I, I stayed away from it Friday night on purpose because as an old coach, I'm superstitious. He's too modest. I think I'm going to have to take up and be his press agent or something like that. And also, Coach Brian Bullard, and I've got to say this, Brian's one of those guys that his positive attitude and Darby's does too always remind me of something you all need to remember uh, about being positive and um, – have a positive attitude in a negative world, and we do sometimes get that way. But there's nothing, nothing but positivity tonight. Guys, great game the other night. People were worried, including yours truly. They had the great running back, even though they made the change at quarterback. Brownlee can run, and he can throw the run-pass option a little bit too. And uh, they brought a good football team to town, and we beat a good football team. Absolutely, and I'm really proud of our defense. We really challenged them to step up and bottle up that running back and in their running game. When they, when their first quarterback got injured this year, they were able to eventually uh, put more of an athlete back there and, and have the quarterback running game. And that's really tough to defend when he can stretch the field. So our defense did a really good job. They really did. We tackled better. And, and we had awareness of some plays that every once in a while as a high school student, you can go to sleep. Well, we had better awareness. And, Coach, what about the – man, I seen you cheering them on. The kids were – they were fired up, weren't they? We were, um, and, and the kids were focused. And, you know, we talked on the show last week about, um, you know, we go down there a few weeks ago and, and things weren't – a couple guys missing and a couple guys out of position. And um, <clears throat> confidence was a little bit low after that game, uh, even though it didn't finish. Um, you know, we were losing at halftime and waited around for a while and, and finally made the decision. And, you know, we come out the next week against ECS and play well. Uh, but you still kind of have that in the back of your mind. You know, we played this team earlier in the year. Uh, we struggled a little bit against them. And uh, so you, you cut, that question was there a little bit of, of how we're going to come out. Are we going to be too amped up? Are we going to be, you know, too, um, too hype, too emotional? But you could tell that um, going out in warm-ups, the, the vibe was good. And, and somebody will ask me, what do you think about the game? And I said, well, about – about 6'10", 6'15", I'll know, uh, because you, you get a good read on those guys. And, and they were loose, and they were they were fired up to play. And, and we came out, and, you know, offense set the tone. And defense, you know, guys like Wyatt Jones and Eli Craig and, and Chilton Smith, those guys were hitting. Um, and I, I would say in that game uh, we won the hitting contest. And, and that's important to come out and set the tone on your own field, in the playoffs, and, and try to take their momentum out of it early. Yeah, in the, the two first plays that you mentioned, um, we had some explosive plays early on offensively. And it's really, especially early in a game, to set that tone offensively, to get those explosive early on. I think the first two pass attempts that, that Austin Kelly had in his, in his first start went for touchdowns. Um, and so that, that's impressive that we're able to, to get guys out in space, formation people, uh, to put them in a bind. Uh, and we knew some tendencies that they had early on, and we were able to get in some unbalanced sets and, and, and throw them off a little bit early in their secondary. Yeah, we beat them at the point of attack and outflanked them on several of those with those unbalanced sets. Uh, a great job of coaching. The kids still have to execute. They executed. You get big gains. You get touchdowns. And um, we had some great individual efforts, but an even better team effort. And uh, I got to say this, Jalen, I hope you're listening. Um, some of the co- I've had some colleges, and people know this. We're not telling you secrets. They are interested in Jalen. He's got a lot mm-hmm. of talent. He played a pretty close to a complete game the other night. If if he didn't grade out well on the <laughs> the film, uh, I will be shocked. Oh, absolutely. When you have 177 yards of offense and two was it two picks, yep, two, two picks, picks, two touchdowns, and could have had two more picks, um, he did an outstanding job. 
they didn't want any part of him uh, in the punting game either. <laughs> That's right. Really didn't kick too much. Cam, Cam probably grades out good all the time. He, he is consistent. He's solid. Uh, for a guy his size, he'll block. I know of a couple of schools because they ask me, and I'll, I'll address it, and you guys can shoot me after the show. They, uh, one school said, is he big enough? Well, it's not how tall you are, and it's not always, because I give examples on the broadcast mm-hmm. of the games of NFL players that were five six or shorter, and he's got two things going for him. One, he's got a big old heart, and two, uh, he will not be denied. He's going to find a way. And uh, I think he will get a chance. And everybody, and people quit measuring our kids by the number of calls they get from schools. That's not the way to measure them. Measure them by the way they grow as young people, as football players, and the progress we're making. Well, in Cam, what he does on the football field is one thing, but it's what he does off the field. He's a tremendous leader in our locker room. Um, and you mentioned some of the stat lines that he had. He had 19 rushes for 131 yards and four touchdowns uh, in that game. He was all over the field. And you can really tell the buy-in that people have, especially offensively, with a lot of your athletes, is how they'll block for one another. And 3-23, and 23, they sell out for one another. And all of our receivers do an outstanding job in our blocking game with Lance and Cooper. Uh, they do a great job. I want to mention those two young men, too. Now, on the sheet, we've got Lance Rowland had two receptions for 52 yards and a touchdown. He also had, because he had the man whip, uh, the biggest pass interference call that it took forever for the flag to be thrown. It got thrown, and um, he did a good job blocking. Cooper Banky had two catches, according to my stats, and I believe the ones Greg gave me. It's not on the list, but uh, that's a lot of balls thrown around. Plus, Daniel Green's in there looming, mm-hmm. and when the big man – Gets hold of one. Now, he can rumble when he runs that football. But I'm getting impressed he's getting better and better. And as he learns the reads from linebacker, oh, me. And and we have a ton of weapons offensively. And people are starting to settle into their roles. And once you have a group of guys that are buying into the roles, settled into the roles, that's when they can start to thrive. And I feel like later on in the year, our offense has really got rhythm of, hey, this is my role. This is what the team needs me to do. And now we're executing at a high level. And uh, I've got to ask about this. Either one of you can comment on it. I thought Elijah DeMoss threw as good a pass mechanics-wise. I watch weird things sometimes. And he's running it out of Cam's spot, but his mechanics, I've seen him throw in JV games and stuff. It was perfect, and he laid a strike in there. Well, not only that, but also in a a crucial fourth down call. Yes. Um, We thought getting him out on the edge, showing that we're going to run our sweep, uh, would suck up that safety. Uh, the safety stayed back and made a good play on the ball, but it was just a better ball that was thrown, and Jalen was able to go up and get it. Jalen's focus was good on that one. Good, And Elijah does so many little things that, uh, and again, in his case, for those of you that worry about it, there are some colleges I've talked to. They call me. I didn't, I didn't call them. They don't know what to do with him because he's an athlete. He can play running back. He could play wide out if he had to. He could play defensive back. And uh, he is more of a running type quarterback, and uh, you know, knock on wood, do whatever. That we don't have to play him this year at quarterback, except for. And he gets mm-hmm. into wildcat, or mm-hmm. and really, he's not a true wildcatter because he can crank the javelin up and throw it on occasion too. And he does a good job, and that's another one that's just buying into the role. I know we've fielded several calls from colleges, and they feel like he is a running back at the next level due to his size and what he can bring to the table and his speed at that size. Um, And sky's the limit for that kid because this is his first real year of high school football, and we're excited about his future. They don't get much, uh, and I'm glad we've got Eli with us tonight. Mm -hmm. He's one of our guests. Offensive line continues to get better and better and better. Getting to enjoy watching the pulling guards on the plays that they pull and uh, the things that they do. Our H-backs are blocking well, and a lot of good things, positive things are happening at Jackson Christian. Absolutely. But our offense wouldn't go without Eli Gay. That's right. I mean, Eli Gay is an absolute warrior. He's undersized a little up front with different odd fronts that we go against, four-man fronts, but he battles uh, and fights, and he does an outstanding job up front getting us in, the, in, the, in great snaps every time, but also executing his job. Coach? You know about Hart. Eli's got a big one, doesn't he? Absolutely. And, you know, thinking about guys that could be on the show tonight, and I thought it was kind of fitting, 
um, you know, Frost's first game to, to bring the center up here and uh, have those guys kind of spend some more time together. And, <clears throat> you know, we've, we've talked to Eli before on the show and, um, you know, how he how he stepped into a tough role last year um, and, and just continues to get better. And I'll ask Coach Reichert from time to time. We'll watch film after games. And I said, because I don't pay – that much attention to our offensive line, more focused on our defensive line. But I'll say, how did Eli do? And he, he's great. And if you don't notice him, that's typically a pretty good night um, when you don't notice your center because he's doing what he's supposed to be doing every single play. And all of his friends on the <coughs> on the line did a, yep. a great job. Next man up, or one eleventh, or both of them together. Darby, comment on that about our team. Yeah, Austin Kelly did a great job stepping into a situation his first playoff game. Um, against Columbia Academy, a team that earlier in the year we struggled to get out of the gate with, um, and he was able to come out, execute our offense at a at a high level, um, and help lead us to victory. Oh, absolutely! Uh, stepping out of that, it's not easy because I think he'd only what thrown nine passes in the year five for nine, <laughs> something right. like that. And, and you don't get a lot of time when you come in, you hand the football off because mm -hmm. you we're not going to rub it in on anybody we we don't teach lessons that way and we don't do all the other stuff we'll play sound football and all that zach cisco had another good night we need to mention him uh only one kickoff i believe failed to make the end zone and that one was pretty deep i thought it was going to get there and uh well having having zach be able to do that at the high school level that's a weapon making an offense drive 80 when they're not necessarily used to sustaining drives that that's huge but going back to austin kelly uh, the reason why he was able to succeed in this game is because the moment wasn't too big for him. He prepared as if he was going to get reps every single game, watched film, knew their guys' numbers, knew, knew what reads that he was going to have to be making. And the moment wasn't too big for him just because how he prepares and, and the kid that he is. And I think getting on the there, – you're by yourself on the mound – that yeah, in baseball, right. that doesn't hurt either. And our athletes play more than one sport for the most part here. Gentlemen, quick final comments for this segment. Coach, I'm going to let you talk a little bit about um, MTCS, and, and we will uh, obviously talk about them as the show goes on and finish up talking about them. But give us a couple thoughts um, on MTCS and, and what we're going to have to do against those guys Friday. So Coach Tackett <coughs> took over after Coach Shambaugh left. Um, two years ago and what Coach Tackett has been able to do at MTCS. Um, I think he took them to the semifinals last year, winning nine or ten games, and um, he really has that program turned in the right direction. They do a great job offensively, uh, junking up the game, uh, limiting the other offense's possessions. Uh, they want to try to hold on to that football as long as possible, run the clock. Um, they want to go for it on fourth downs. They want to be aggressive in their play calling. Uh, defensively, uh, they're a four-man front team. They want to stay in a two-high structure. They'll morph down into a cover three, man two look, cover two. Um, but really it's just it, – this is something that we say to our guys, and you know this, um, but it's about being us and, and being the standard and executing our game plan and, and owning our 111th of the field and not making too much of the moment, but just owning the moment and, and executing. Absolutely. And they like to go for two quite a bit also. They don't kick many – and usually their kickoffs aren't very deep. Uh, you're right, junking up. That's I'm gonna have to steal that expression from. <laughs> that's probably a better way than I describe it. It's gonna be an unusual game. We're gonna have live video this time. Hey, there we go. No national federation to get, and I'll get off their backs a little bit because I object to having an illegal governmental monopoly on <laughs> things like that. The national federation are good guys up till they get to video. We're gonna have it. We're gonna play football. Final comment, and then we've got to take our first break. Well, before I get off here, um, yes. I know my man here would never do this, but just want to make sure everybody knows that what uh, proud we are of him for being his family, being inducted into the Cheatham County Sports Hall of Fame as a gold medal family. And, Coach Bull, you can go into a little more detail about your grandparents and, and even your stats at Freed Hardman, but we couldn't be more proud of you and your family for this accomplishment. A absolutely. Well, I'm not going to talk about my stats, but my <laughs> grandparents were uh, two of the best people that ever walked the earth, and, and I miss them. And it was a tremendous uh, honor to be there Saturday with all of my family and my, my kids getting to see that too. So it, it was a really special night, 
And I appreciate it. And we're very proud of Coach Bull and his family. Don't let him be too modest either. A uh, great baseball player at Freed, but there was a heck of an athlete long before he ever got to Freed Hardeman, mm -hmm. and I will say that much. And I'm going to go ahead and compliment and we'll, uh, Coach Bull and I are going to talk about the other. Coach Arby Palmer is now the – all-time leading winning coach at Jackson Christian in football. And we're proud of him. He's done this in a short amount of time, and he's a young man. This is his head, first head football coaching job. And what a way to start it. Yes, sir. But, and, and I keep saying it, it's not about me, and I, and I truly mean that. Coach Bull and all the other assistants and, and the kids buying in, uh, that, that shows them as well. Absolutely. We've got a great crowd here at Hub City Deli. I have been holding, and you see I'm waiting to get to my chest pie. They've got great sandwiches, a good place to be. They are good Jackson Christian people, too. We want you to support them. You'll support them anyway, and get the Beckham. I like Blake, you owe me for that. But also the, the burgers are good. The brisket uh, cannot be touched. And to this week, the Italian pork. We're going to take a time out, and when we come back, Greg Armour is going to be here. Hold Coach on, Greg. call five people and tell them the man is coming. I bet our views are about to double, Coach. They are going to double. We'll be back after this. Hub City Deli is honored to sponsor Jackson Christian Athletics. Gourmet chef Peter Thomas invites you in for a totally new experience in craft sandwiches, wraps, and salads. The homemade hoagies are baked fresh. A big favorite is Pete's brisket hoagie with brisket, smoked Texas style. The Hub City Burger is a Jackson favorite. The salads are always fresh and unique. Hub City Deli is open for breakfast as well. Located on Pleasant Plains Extended, just down the road from Jackson Christian. We are back for the exciting second segment of the Jackson Christian Eagle Show. And if you wonder why the hands are going... The man that's able to leap tall stat books at a single bound, faster than a speeding bullet with his stats, and more powerful than any statistician in the NFL. It's Greg Armour is here with us. But I'm going to let, like we traditionally do, Coach, Coach Bullard is going to start this out because he gets to see every day all the wonderful things Greg does for this program. And without Greg, a lot of stuff wouldn't happen that we love and the kids love in the program. Absolutely. And, and Coach, you nailed it um, right, right on the head. Um, Chase did, did our sheet for us tonight, and I'm just going to read off some of this stuff that, um, that we have about Coach Greg and, and say a little bit before we start talking with him. 36 seasons um, as the Jackson Christian statistician, done stats for 279 games, worked for nine head coaches, and we estimate about 8,000 miles traveled uh, with Jackson Christian teams and middle school teams. That's probably not even counting middle school games and – um, JV games and all all the time that he spent. Um, when I first got here, I think this is my ninth year with Coach Greg, I kept hearing about Greg Armour. Um, and this was when he was still uh, working a full-time job. And then he would come over really mostly just in season. Um, but met Coach Greg. And uh, from the from the moment that you meet him, uh, he's a guy that, that would give you the shirt off his back. Um, you, you know, anytime my family needed anything, I know he'd be there for us. And he does so much for our program. The stats are one thing, but – um, the stuff that he does behind the scenes and how much he cares for these guys, um, it, it's, it goes unnoticed a lot. But these guys, trust me, they notice him. And they appreciate him. And um, even as much as, as goofy as he is dancing at practice today and <laughs> making those guys laugh, and um, he, he's just a, a great man. And um, Jackson Christian football wouldn't be the program that we are uh, without him. And he helps work with those middle school football players. That's too. right. Greg knows football, folks. It's not just writing with that pencil of his. And I got to ask him first off: How many pencils have you? Have you? Uh, oh, okay. That's Paul talking to. And how many pencils have you wore out? There's uh, there's no telling how many pencils I've worn out. Probably probably dozens on dozens of of pencils and pens over the years dozens and dozens what got you into jackson christian school first of all and then why the sports department well, the first head coach of jackson christian steve stroud was looking for somebody to keep the middle school and the high school stats and a good friend of mine uh come to me one day and asked me now if i'd be interested and i said yeah sure because uh one of my godsons was playing on the junior high team 
So uh, I started in, in 87 keeping stats. We only had five games that first year in 87, high school games. We went 0-5. Facilities have changed a little bit since you've been here. Facilities have changed. Uh, the uh, home stands was on the uh, Vista stand, and we had a deer stand for a press box. Yeah. We'd bring down the uh, two of the uh, baseball stands and put it on the uh, hill where the home stands are. Yeah, and uh, it, it was an interesting facility. When I stood on the home at doing radio even back then, even though I was still coaching, North said I'd do a little bit of radio. We won't mention the station because it's not – not one that I'm I'm with right now, but um, the crown was so high you couldn't see me uh, from the other side, which is the home side now. Yep, that's correct. And we we paint it, paint the field on Wednesday nights and after church and Thursday nights. Wow, that is dedicated. Brian, you know some little secrets and how hard he works, and there's a lot of stuff he has to do. Well, coach, you you know we we teach during the day. Um, and, and, you know, come down during a seventh block or after school um, and, and trying to get changed and get out to practice. And, and one thing you kind of take for granted is the water's out there, the footballs are out there. Anything you need, um, everything we need for practice is out there uh, waiting on us. He takes care of our trainer, um, gets his tent up for if it's sunny outside, things like that, that – with without him, it, it would put a lot of lot more work and a lot more strain on on guys, and and you take it for granted. And and I hope he he knows how much we appreciate him. We do give him a hard time. He he's like our he's like our granddad in there. We all carry on together. But um, Mr. Greg's awesome, and and um, I I can't picture Jackson Christian football without him. And I I haven't been here too terribly long, but uh, it's it's refreshing and and it's uh it's kind of comforting. Uh, when you walk in and, and he's down there and then after the games we do stats together and um, we sit around and eat and things like that and he, he reads off stats and um, it's just good things, that good traditions and things that we're building as a staff. So uh, he, he there's a million other things I could talk about. Now he's with us full time, uh, works uh, half the day, probably more than half the day, um, <laughs> helps out maintenance. He was blowing off the field today when I got down there. Um, trying to get the leaves off the field and things like that, Mr. Greg. I want, I want to ask you, give me give me your favorite. Um, before we talk a little bit about MTCS, I like to get his. So he watches film too. He he studies it up. Give me your favorite um, regular season memory of Jackson Christian, and give me your favorite uh, besides the state championship game. Your favorite playoff memory from Jackson Christian. Uh, besides the. Well, the probably the first playoff game was in. Uh, 1992, uh, we played FACS. We lost it 55-34, to 34, but it was a good game, and it was a building point for that for Jackson Christian. So, in 92 was the first playoff game. What's a, what's a game that maybe Jackson Christian was going in as an underdog and, and they were able to, uh, to go on up against? I know you've talked about running backs and quarterbacks and things that we faced throughout the years. What's a memory that sticks out in your mind like that? Well, I'd have to say it was the semifinals of the state championship when we faced uh, Mount Pleasant. Uh, Marco Daly was their quarterback. He had 41 touchdowns out of 43 and 2,800 yards rushing. And they, his nickname was Super Mario. And Coach Stewart told us we was going to pack the box with eight players, and if they beat us passing, so be it. And we stopped them cold. Y'all played a little bit of gap eight goal line. Some uh, yeah, you got in version of the four four, but you couldn't tell the four was behind them. Everybody and I, I've lived in Mount Pleasant. I know Super Mario, mm -hmm. and he could cow trump you in a hurry, and that was a good one. You can't name everybody, and I, I know that uh, Greg would remember them, folks. A couple of players that you know <laughs> over the years, like an Adam Reagan, and, and you go ahead and mention Adam again. Going back, who are some kids that really left an impression on you? Well, uh, probably uh, Mark Taylor, uh, the guy that played uh, uh, quarterback. The first quarterback that w in '92 was uh, played baseball. His name slipped my mind. Played for Ole Miss. Uh, the ca uh, catcher Abernathy, right? Abernathy. Abernathy. Yep. 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 I, it slipped mine. I was sitting there thinking with you, and then all of a sudden, yeah, oh, Matt, catcher. Matt, Matt Abernathy, yeah. yeah. And then, you know, of course, uh, Rashad Raynard, uh, 
Uh, Rashad was carried. I liked Rashad. Yeah, and uh, then then we had defensive wise, you know, uh, several defensive players that have been here uh, over the years. And uh, you know, some great memories. And, and there's more kids than that. And you've worked with nine very good men as head coaches. Nine coaches. And this Darby's probably the youngest, though, isn't he? Is it when he started as head coach? Probably so. It, he would. It would either be him or Joel Golf. Oh, I forgot about Joel. Hey, Joel, that would be. We need to look those birthdays up. Mm-hmm. And uh, what's the most fun thing that you've done besides your dancing today to help the team with Jackson Christian's program? Well, you know, uh, I mean, I, I go in the locker room. The kids are cutting up. I, you know, and I sometimes cut up with them, and they. You know, they just love it, you know, and I love the kids, and that's that's one reason I do it. Absolutely. Coach, I know you got some more. And, again, Coach Bullard is here with me. We've got Greg Armour, and we've got a couple of men. I think you wanted to ask him about Middle Tennessee yeah, Christian. Yeah, Mr. Coach Greg, give us, um, without giving away too much, uh, give us a couple of things. We talk about it uh, every day. Um, give us a couple of things that we're going to have to do well. Um, offensively and defensively to, to be successful Friday night? Well, defensively, we're going to have to stay in our gaps and keep them from getting a big play. Offensively, we're just going to have to take care of business, hold on to the ball, and just let our skilled players take charge. Absolutely. Yeah. Greg, we've got a little over a minute left. It's your turn, and if you want to talk about the history of the program, your enjoyment, the program itself, you, you've got at least a good minute and a half to say anything. And, and folks, listen to this man. He's wise, and uh, just because he's like me, he got one or two gray hairs. We don't have many, but uh, listen to the wisdom of Greg Armour. Well, I guess, you know, my main thing is that, you know, I love the program. I love the people, coaches and parents and the kids. And, you know, 2008 when I was over in Iraq, uh, we at the Milan game, Scott Gatling told me, said, hey, wait a minute before you go into the locker room. And both home team and visiting team the announcer announced that I was home from Iraq for Thanksgiving. And all of them gave me a standing vo- ovation for that. And that's that's a memory that I'll take with me for a long time. Absolutely, and a great one. And I, I know what you want to say. You want to say, go Eagles, don't you? I just read it on his <laughs> lips. And I hope I didn't yep. steal anything by saying, no. Greg's most probably. He, remember what I said early in the show about having a positive attitude in a negative world. This is another part of our program, another person in our program that has a positive attitude in a negative world. Greg, thank you for all you do. Thank you all. And we are going to take Appreciate a time you. out. And you think about the words of wisdom from Greg Armour and the things he does. Next time you see Greg, thank you. Got plenty of sandwiches here. We still got you a little time to get down here. And I've seen people with takeouts, and you can do that. Hub City Deli, a good supporter of Jackson Christian School, but they also are involved in the school itself. And we're going to come back, and we're going to have the first of our two young men for a great interview. You got time to call those five extra people up. We'll be back after this timeout. Hub City Deli is honored to sponsor Jackson Christian Athletics. Gourmet chef Peter Thomas invites you in for a totally new experience in craft sandwiches, wraps, and salads. The homemade hoagies are baked fresh. A big favorite is Pete's brisket hoagie with brisket, smoked Texas style. The Hub City Burger is a Jackson favorite. The salads are always fresh and unique. Hub City Deli is open for breakfast as well. Located on Pleasant Plains Extended, just down the road from Jackson Christian. We are back here at Hub City Deli with the Jackson Christian Eagles show. Coach Joe Holloway, Brian Buller, we're fixing to introduce our special guest. But this show would not be possible without your support, the support of Hub City Deli, the great work of our coaching staff. It takes off. Got to compliment Chase McLean and four of the nights over my hold up that chart. He makes my spotting chart. He and his class believe uh, Wyatt Jones is in mm-hmm. and part of the matter of fact, he led it and made it while Chase was in Washington, D.C. Now, sitting across from us is Gary Lockhart, and this show definitely doesn't get on without Gary. He's got the earphones on. He's got the controls. He's got the pictures. He's got the sound. 
And no, he doesn't have his hand in your pocket at home, but he's got everything else going. Got to he and Paul Schultz, our executive director, who's over there in deep study and listening hard and enjoying his Coca-Cola here at Hub City Deli. It takes a team just like it does for Jackson Christian. And after saying a couple of words about a young man, I know now both his grandfathers. I've had uh, extensive talk. One of them I used to do a little radio with. And uh, this young man's not just a football player. He's uh, got a pretty golden arm in baseball, too. He can play short where you got to throw it deep in the hole. And he also pitches some, too. And which is the – I'm going to ask him about that a little later. Is that the loneliest place on a baseball field? But instead of hearing me, you need to hear it from Mr. Enthusiasm himself, Coach Brian Bullard, to introduce our guest, Austin Kelly. Thanks, Coach. Uh, Austin Kelly with us here tonight, um, sophomore uh, quarterback. Uh, just a little bit about his night, 10 completions, 160 yards, um, two touchdowns, and um, first, first career start. Um, and it was a big one. And, you know, there's a lot of – a lot of th- a lot on the line as as a playoff game. It's a, a win or go home situation, um, and you know you you couldn't tell that, that that was his first time out there as a starter, um, and you know he's prepared. And, and I'm going to ask him a little bit about this. And Coach Palmer talked about this one in our first segment about how if if you prepare uh, like you're the you're the guy when you get the opportunity you're you're going to have a better chance. It doesn't mean that everything's going to be perfect. It doesn't mean that. You won't make mistakes, or you know, have to be get some help from your teammates. But if you're preparing, you're studying, you're doing all those things, it gives you a better um, opportunity to succeed along with your teammates. Austin, thank you for being here with us tonight. Let's talk a little bit about um, that preparation, and then we'll we'll talk about the game a little bit. But what goes into that? How do you, um, you know, you come into the season, you got a you got a senior quarterback, and so you're you're getting a lot of reps and practice a lot of reps in in JV you're even getting some receiver reps uh when Lance was banged up earlier in the season uh snapping on punts and and holding on field goals doing a lot of different things how do you try to rein all that in and and be able to focus on on playing quarterback um there's many different ways you could go about it but I try to stay with quarterback mainly but I'll go week to week looking how they're going to line up how they react to what routes what coverages they're going to do with different formations and just see how they're going to react if we have to change the routes or tweak anything. I just try to find the little things because those little things go a long way in football Absolutely, game. absolutely. And and what did um, – <clears throat> you know, we're, you're going into Columbia Academy, and, and we talked about this a little bit earlier. We struggled a little bit um, at their place, at the half that we got to play, and um, it, it wasn't a fault to anybody. It was just they – more credit to them, uh, taking us out of our rhythm and, and playing harder than we did. And um, I would like to see how that game played out. But um, so the the little bit of question was there. Uh, a little bit of your first start um, was there. What what were you? Um, what was your mindset like going into that game, and especially being a playoff game? Um, mindset going into that game, I was just trying to rein myself in, make the simple plays, and then when we we have our big plays, try to hit those. Um, just not doing anything too big, just being simple. And and I think that was the message, Coach, that, that we tried to get across to him is, you know, you, you've got three, you've got 23, you've got 13, you've got 85, you got one. I mean, you got – even Wyatt Jones was a, is a threat now to run the ball. Oh, touchdown, uh, man. So you got <laughs> some guys around you. It's not like you're going out there and just hoping for the best and, and trusting those guys, trusting that, that veteran offensive line. And just relaxing and, and doing your job. Coach, what, what question do you have for him? Well, I've got to ask one. You opened the season at wide out. Did that give you or help you any with your perspective from the quarterback position? Yes, sir. It, it certainly did because you can see how safeties and corners are going to react to what certain routes. And then when you're throwing, you're like, oh, this is how he's going to react. It, it helps a lot. Now, how much change? Because you're not that far away yet. Here you are on the thresholds of a big football career the rest of the time you're in high school. How much change was it coming over from middle school? Because you were a very good football player in middle school, too. It was it was lots of difference. Middle school is kind of slow. I mean, you can kind of pick. So I just threw it up to Jalen because, I mean, he was a lot bigger than everybody in middle school. Sure. Yeah. But I came up and Coach Palmer gave me the opportunity to come up and practice 
with the high school after eighth grade season, and it was fast. When did you start wanting to be a Jackson Christian School football player and wanting to be a quarterback? Because, you know, some people, that's young men's dream. Sometimes you don't find that out till you're in middle school. Well, I'd always wanted to play quarterback, wanted to throw it, but my first year playing football was seventh grade. Seventh grade. Started in seventh grade, yes, sir. Good start. Being a baseball pitcher, can, in theory, a baseball pitcher become a quarterback? You are, but speak for the rest of these guys that get on the mound. Oh, uh, I I think it can, but I think shortstop helps me a lot more than pitching because you, those throws you got to make them short. Some are in the hole, some are backhand, some are slow rollers. You have to so many different arm angles. And then rolling out in football, it's not always going to be a perfect pocket, not always going to have the perfect throw, and you have to just make a play. So I think baseball helps a lot. And, those type of throws. And I'm going to ask Austin, and he does not know any of the questions. This is off my normal line, and I'll eat it. Which one would you rather be? And I'm not doing this. And the coaches, we're going to stay <laughs> out from us. But would you like to every once in a while go under center? Because I've talked to young men in y'all's program before, and even before Coach Palmer. Some would like to go under center. Some prefer it to either be in the spread or the pistol. Well, I, I ain't done that before. But I think – it could throw a mix-up in. I think – I mean, I don't know. That's a tough I'm question. Not, you I just want to play football. And you'll yes, throw sir. it whether it's a 3, 5, or 7 or just a three-step step drop out of a spread, and we'll call it the spread for general purposes. Very quickly, favorite food at school and away from school? At school, probably be Crispitos. Crispitos. Yes, sir. Favorite subject, and you can have more than one favorite teacher. I have learned over the weeks that we need to have more than one favorite teacher. Favorite subject, be math. Man, everybody, that's a math school, folks. I'm going to go back and enroll in some math. I probably need some. <laughs> I didn't do too well in trick and calculus. But uh, who's your favorite teacher? Favorite teachers, Miss Tracy Widener and Miss Stephanie Christensen. Okay, that's that sounds good to me now. One of the things that I like to ask our young men, it's important because – we're building young men and having character. Your favorite Bible verse? Philippians 4.13. Coach, what else you got for this young man in heaven? He's had all the answers. Yeah, and I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go somewhere a little bit different. Um, Austin, we, we talk about family, and we, we try to stress it, and um, it's not always pretty. It's not always clean, and um, we, we have struggles within our family. But you got, um, you got a phone call, uh, I believe, Thursday night. Um, from somebody and, and talk a little bit about that and who called you and, and what uh, his his words were for you going into Friday's game. Uh, Aaron Smith had called me and I was kind of like, wow. Because when I went up in eighth grade, Aaron was always a brother towards me. I always looked up to him. And he called me and he was like, be calm. He was like, own the moment. He was like, you've got this. And it made me kind of sit back and realize like, all right, I, I guess I got this. And that, yeah, and I, I, that goes a long way. Um, and it, it's it's our goal. Uh, it's what we try to do this for. We we like to win, and Coach Primer likes to win. But to have our former players, and to my knowledge, nobody asked him to do that. Um, I, I think he he saw it from a leadership perspective, from a quarterback perspective, from somebody that that came in and, and got reps. And like Austin said, when when he was an eighth grader, he stood beside me and. Uh, read off the plays as I signaled them in to Aaron and things like that and was, you know, ran the balls or whatever we needed him to do. Um, and for Aaron to uh, take that and, and to call him just shows the kind of leadership that he he has and still has. And I want Austin to, to really hold on to that because one day he won't be a Jackson Christian anymore. He'll be in college doing his thing and there will be another quarterback. And we don't know who that will be, but he might have that opportunity to reach out to him and, and call them. And, and that's what we're trying to do and that's what we're trying to build. And I just wanted to share that with folks listening. And, um, you know, Jason and Susie, I know they'd be proud of that as well with Aaron and – uh, we're proud of him and what he accomplished at quarterback for us his last year and uh, look for Austin to do big things as well, Coach. Oh, absolutely, and it was important, Coach. I'm proud you shared that because I might have forgotten to share that. It's your turn to say anything you want to, not only the Jackson Christian fans, but understand we've probably got a fan or two out of Middle Tennessee uh, listening. I know we've got some in East Tennessee, and one of my former players is even listening, Ebony Prather tonight. She's a former athlete too. <laughs> I'm going to say I'm going to thank all my linemen 
from that game, Columbia Academy. I mean, I, I was nervous, but you can go back and watch the game. I never got touched. Yeah, are you, I, a, are you buying food or watches <laughs> for them after that? <laughs> yeah. Tell them we're going to feed them on Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> That's right, big feed on Thursday. Austin, continue the good work. We'll see you in baseball season, too. Now, we're not going to play any basketball, though, right? No, sir. No basketball. But no basketball. We'll see you, and we're going to have Jackson Christian baseball. I'll have these two fine young men across from me in baseball. This one plays. The other one just coaches, <laughs> but he does a good job. We have a good time with baseball, and Worthy Road Studios brings you the best, especially Jackson Christian baseball. We had nine cameras one game last year. That's more than they had at UT at the SEC games that were on ESPN. And uh, you're going to get a good broadcast, and some great baseball was played. It's going to be some better baseball next year, right? Yes, sir. Absolutely. we got to take another time out when we come back. A very special young man, and um, I'm going to let Coach say a little more than I did at the start, but he is special to me for several reasons, and Eli Gay will be with us, but don't forget Hub City Deli, Jackson Christian School, winning combination. Let's take a timeout. Hub City Deli is honored to sponsor Jackson Christian Athletics. Gourmet chef Peter Thomas invites you in for a totally new experience in craft sandwiches, wraps, and salads. The homemade hoagies are baked fresh. A big favorite is Pete's Brisket Hoagie with Brisket, smoked Texas style. The Hub City Burger is a Jackson favorite. The salads are always fresh and unique. Hub City Deli is open for breakfast as well. Located on Pleasant Plains Extended, just down the road from Jackson Christian. And as things get better and better right here at Hub City Deli, the Jackson Christian Eagles show, we got the man in the middle. And, no, I'm not going to do my uh, Chicago Bulls. Oh, I had some of your teammates get hold of me and wanted me to crank it up and do the man in the middle bit like they used to do when uh, Cartwright was introduced when Jordan was playing. But we'll do that another night. First of all, the voice couldn't handle it. But Eli Gay is with us. He is a very special young man. He took over center under adverse conditions when we lost a center that you would have thought would have held that for more than one year and was probably a college prospect. He stepped in. He's, even though he's undersized, I think a college might find a spot for him sometime when it when it's all over. Coach Bullard, it's your turn to take off and take care of this young man. Yes, sir. Thank you, Coach. We have uh, starting center Eli Gay with us here tonight. Um, and he won't have individual stats. Uh, he might have some of his pancake stats kept for himself, but uh, not stat that we keep. But our offense, uh, he's part of an offense that's rushed for 27, or 2,730 yards on 285 carries and almost 10 yards a carry. Um, and, and, Eli, I was thinking about, you know, I wanted to have Austin on. Uh, he did a great job for us. And we were talking in the, in the, the office about who to, to bring on with him, and I thought maybe – Let's bring the center on, uh, somebody that, that he has to work closely with and is a, in the middle of our offense and um, alongside those guys and, and just really, really impacted our rushing game this year. Um, Eli, let's, let's start with this. Let's talk about Austin a little bit. Um, then we'll, we'll talk about you and the rest of that offensive line. What, what were your, your junior? Uh, You've been through some battles. You, you got thrown into a tough spot last year. Um, I believe ECS was your first start. Um, and then, and then I think USJ might have been game number two, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. Um, so you kind of have some experience with guy goes down, and and you got to you're the man, you're you're the guy going in there. So, what did you share with Austin, if anything, about that uh, the job he needed to do Friday night? Well, I just told him, you know, you don't need to let anything or anybody get in your head and make you more nervous than you need to be, and you just calm down and you do you, because we all believe in you. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, it's similar positions. Now, Austin's going to throw it and hand it off, but Eli touches it every play um, and has to start with getting that ball uh, to him. And, and what, did you, uh, what did you see from our offensive line maybe that kind of gave you uh, the confidence and gave Austin confidence knowing that he was going to have a chance to be successful Friday night? Well, we had been working with him before, and we just knew that we needed to do the, go the extra mile in order to protect him. And so I think that gave us some more motivation. Absolutely. And 
Moving on to you um, and, and your performance specifically in the offensive line performance. Um, you know, we, we go there a few weeks ago to their place, and uh, they, they, they didn't stop us. They didn't shut us down. But we, you know, we punted a few times, and we got some yards on the ground. Uh, what, what was different from this – from that game moving forward to a playoff game, what was different up front that you guys noticed? Um, I would say, you know, Kelly, he hasn't quite got his volume figured out. And I, I told him in the game we're going to have to be a little bit louder because those guys were yelling. and every, It was very chaotic mm -hmm. at the beginning. But we got it figured out and got it all sorted out. And we know what we need to do going forward. So they were um, pretty good defensive line, um, yes, and and they were trying to take away, uh, trying to really widen those ends and take away our run game. And uh, what were you guys able to talk about with Coach Reichert on the sideline and, and get kind of ironed out? Um, I believe we had Cam had 131 yards on the ground, um, you know, another 15 or his 15th career 100 yard game. What were we able to make some changes or kind of notice up front that we were able to take advantage of? Um, since they were out so wide, they gave us gaps in the middle so we could gash them up the middle as long as they were going to keep their guys outside. i got to ask this because Go when, when you talk about that, uh, do you like just hitting the nose man if they have one on you, or do you like it where you can fire out and they've got a linebacker out there that you can take him and knock him to kingdom yes, come? Sir. You like that better? Yes, huh? sir. What is it? What, tell folks just, what it feels like to get one of those good blocks on somebody. It's just you know they don't know what's going to happen. And so whenever you surprise them like that and they go flying, it's a really good feeling. The, uh, when somebody blitzes us, you don't have time to get butterflies. How do you guys – and you don't have to give away how we block the thing. You, you guys seem to have gotten better at communicating with each other. And some of those middle blitzes, we are really picking up well now. Yes, yeah, sir. Well, we, we practice that pretty much every day is just following our rules and staying true to our assignment and owning our 111th trusting the guy next to us okay very quickly and we've done this before but we need to do it again remind them what your favorite food at school in a way is at school i would have to say crispitos yeah, those are hot right now <laughs> what about right. away from school away from school if i'm at home my mom's chicken alfredo is probably my favorite she is good somebody told me it, it was an, uh, somebody else told me that i need to get an invite wrangle an invite come over and eat chicken alfredo at your house so <laughs> so she must be a good cook now what about uh and again let's go ahead and, and give that bible verse and and again i already know what it is because i have talked with this young man before yes sir well i have changed mine recently mine's now oh, okay. galatians 110 <clears throat> it says if you're if you're living to please others then how can you be a servant of god excellent mm. boy that that you That's have strong. two good ones. Let's just say that. And, and folks, we do do a good job. Remind them who your favorite teachers and subjects are. Um, I would say Miss Baker is probably my favorite teacher. And having her with all my friends in government and world history, back-to-back -back classes for two hours is probably the highlight of my day. Now, before you graduate in football, what do you want to accomplish at Jackson Christian? Um, I want to win state. What about See, individually? What individually. Does, what does Eli want to accomplish? I just want to be remembered as the guy that motivated everybody else and trying to lead by example. Absolutely. I think he does a good job of that. Brian, you got anything else for him? I, I got one thing for yeah. him uh, before we finish up with Eli. But So if I'm, I might have told the story before, and I'm not going to tell the whole thing, but if you go back a few years uh, when Eli was playing middle school football, um, you know, wasn't the biggest guy and still not the biggest guy, but he's grown physically and gotten stronger. Uh, there was a hit he took uh, in the last game of the season, I believe. And, Coach, I'll be honest, I was up in the box, and I just kind of thought to myself, I hope I hope he gets up and I hope he keeps playing uh, football because it was one of those that makes you kind of – makes you question it. And, you know, it, he walks off the field, and I, I don't remember if we won or lost. It doesn't matter. But I, I talked to him. I said – you went back in, and I'm proud of you. And and you you got hit, and you got you went back in. You you kind of shook it off, and now I watch this guy, and and he's polite, and he speaks to us. But I like watching that offensive line on film after games, and you see that little extra now, that little nasty streak that Eli's got. And I don't know, I don't know where it's come from. I don't know if it's uh, just being around those other offensive linemen that like to do that. Um, but it, there's something about 
uh, guys that can look at you and smile and shake your hand and, and treat you right and treat your kids right. But then when that between the whistles, they're trying to to get those pancake blocks and, and finish blocks. Eli, what do you what do you attribute that to, and, and how have you grown in in that area? I would say that a lot of that just comes from getting older. When you're a freshman and sophomore, you just don't have that mean in you. And then over time, after practicing and getting hit around a bunch, you, it doesn't hurt as bad. And so you're just willing to get more physical with people than normal. And just seeing highlights of people getting pancakes and stuff, you, you want to be that guy. And so you just go out there and just get mad at people and try to do what you can to get them on the ground and to make your own highlight. And I, I guarantee you there's not a, an offensive line um, in the state of Tennessee that has more fun than these guys, uh, but also that they care about the running backs and their skill guys like they do. And, uh, Eli, we're proud of you, Coach. You, you want to finish it off? Well, it's his turn, I guarantee you. And, folks, pay attention. Stay close. It's like, like Greg Armour and Austin speaking now. Listen closely. <laughs> anything you want to say to the fans about coming out to the game or just anything in general? I just want to thank the fans for coming out every game, supporting us, no matter where we are, especially at road games. A big crowd at road games. Um, like Coach Rockard said, one of his friends said that he wants his kids to play in an environment like ours, people that love us and want to cheer us on. So I just want to thank you all for that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And remind people that you can see them live this time. Mm -hmm. National Federation not getting away. We had the tape. Uh, of it and some of the players have told me they went back and watched the tape and some things like that but this is going to be live we will take uh, the mics at 6 30 with the pregame seven o'clock uh, with the actual kickoff and all of the action and when we come back for the final segment coach bull is going to tell you about how you can still get tickets how you can participate and be in this game and we're going to talk about the middle tennessee christian school and i'm going to tell you what it's a good matchup from two fine teams. We're going to take our final time out and come back with more. Hub City Deli is honored to sponsor Jackson Christian Athletics. Gourmet chef Peter Thomas invites you in for a totally new experience in craft sandwiches, wraps, and salads. The homemade hoagies are baked fresh. A big favorite is Pete's brisket hoagie with brisket, smoked Texas style. The Hub City burger is a Jackson favorite. The salads are always fresh and unique. Hub City Deli is open for breakfast as well. Located on Pleasant Plains Extended, just down the road from Jackson Christian. And we are back for the final segment at Hub City Deli of the Jackson Christian Eagles show. Coach Brian Bullard and myself will handle that. Coach, first of all, we got tickets, we got Twitter poll, player of the week, some things like that, and then the all-important opponent we'll talk about it. Well, I'll, I'll be honest about this first, Coach. I, I let us down on the on the Twitter player of the week, um, and we, we did not have a poll up there this week, and, and we forgot to take that off. But we'll definitely have that up going uh, next week, and hopefully we'll have a show here to – to talk about it and talk about a winner. Yeah, um, well, I'm going to tell you, the uh, winner of the Twitter poll is the team. There you go. There you go. Absolutely. Uh, it was a big win um, and good crowd and uh, just a good night of, of playoff football. Um, so this Friday night, um, we'll, we'll have tickets again. We'll be on sale on GoFan um, for a little bit cheaper than you can pay at the door. Um, I think it's $8, but with the fee. They have a convenience you still fee save 60 on there. Cents, so you believe. save a little bit 40 of money. To 60 cents. Um, but you know, there's no passes. Booster Club parking is still a thing. So if you but have not your, your season club, ticket, but though. not it your seat, work. not your pass. Um, and that's TWS double A getting getting their money. The you know MTCS gets money. Everybody everybody makes a little bit of money off the game, and um, so it, you know they cover their travel expenses and things like that. So um, we're we're hoping for a, a center room only crowd and and make some noise and really affect the game and and really be a positive uh, influence on these guys Friday night. Absolutely. Now, our opponent, we've only played them one time in the history of the two schools. I believe that was a playoff game. Unfortunately, we didn't come out on the good end of that one. Uh, we're 0-1 all time against them. 2018, and I am positive it was a playoff game. We lost 54-42, a lot of offense. Is that what we're expecting this week? Uh, if you look at their scores, um, they, they try to – let's go here. They, they try to junk it up and, um, and, and control time of possession. They, you know, they run the single wing, um, and, and so they don't mind to have the ball for eight, nine minutes at a time. 
Um, and so their, their scores aren't typically um, very large. Um, they, they've given up some points. They put up some points this year. Um, but we, Mr. Gray hit the nail on the head. We've got to um, stay in our gap and, and do our job. You can't watch the football. Um, you have to watch your keys and read your keys and, and hopefully get a few stops defensively and put some points on the board, put a little pressure on that offense. Well, they love to run their quarterback quite a bit. They also have a running back, Eli Wilson, I believe his, is his name. He's got over 1,000 yards yep. this year and was named, uh, like Jalen Mosley, as one of the 100 players in the playoffs to keep an eye on. And uh, it's just power football. Yep. They'll even run up, uh, run a formation with two wings to one side, overload that side. Their splits, even for their wide out when they have one, is not real wide and – uh, you called it single wing football, and, and Brian is right. I even saw them in a film. I finally got hold of some film today. They looked like they were in their old Notre Dame box. And yeah, I kept they, looking they'll for show the four, a box. Four yeah. horsemen to come out and yep. run the football. They'll, they'll do that. Um, they'll pull four, three, four guys at a time. Um, and, and people wonder why you do it, and, and you do it to control the clock. And when you have three, four, five guys that can run the ball, um, it, it presents a lot of challenges, and and to be honest, we we have to be physical. We have to uh, win the point of attack, set the edge, and when we get there, we got to make tackles, get them on the ground. And we must match touchdowns with them too. That's right. If if they get out in front, they're going to try to eat the whole entire mm -hmm. clock up. And uh, you know, it's it's not for them. It is pretty football. For a fan up in the stands, it's not always pretty. They can't. And folks don't. Get an idea. They're three yards in cloud of dust. They can also break one off. For yeah, eight, they have speed. Yards they have there. good team speed, um, and they'll get into situations where they'll throw it. Um, capable receivers, and so you can't just put eight in the box and and load it up. You have to respect that as well. Um, you know, offensively, we got to run the ball and we got to control the clock. We have to do what we uh, do with that with that too high look. They're going to try to limit our big plays and. If you watch us play and you look at our scores, you know that uh, we kind of get going off those big plays. And so it, it may be a little more methodical on our end, um, but at the end of the day, it's us executing against them and them executing against us. And, you know, hopefully we, uh, we bring the fight to them and, and have a chance to, to win the game in the fourth quarter. About 30 seconds for a final comment to the fans. Yeah, we, Coach, we had a, a really good atmosphere um, Friday night, I would love to see double the folks there. Um, you know, we had some trips going on, some folks out of town. Uh, but be there, be loud, um, make noise. Uh, those these guys love that and and get really fired up. And uh, when you when you're playing a team where you got to stop the run, play after play after play, that crowd can be the sometimes be the difference in the game. And um, we we hope to have a big one there. Um, and and we are. We are not taking this moment for granted and, and happy for another opportunity Friday. Absolutely. If you cannot be there, we will have the game live. It will be audio and video, both video. I keep emphasizing that. And uh, we want to keep it going because we're going to have two weeks straight of video, 6.30 pregame show, 7 o'clock with the game. Let's get tuned in if you can't be there. But there are people in the stands watching the game both ways visibly, and then they look down at their iPhones and things like that. Another show that is great, the positivism of the school, the program, and all that. Remember, have a positive attitude in a negative world. Uh, this is a copyrighted show, and any rebroadcast, retransmission, or further use of this contest without the express written consent of Worthy Road Studios is prohibited. We want to thank Gary Lockhart, who did a great job, as he always does. He is the man with the plan, the tower of power of doing the Tuesday night show. The executive producer who collects all the money and gets all the girls and all that stuff like that is Paul Schultze, and he will be the executive producer of Friday night's broadcast. For Coach Brian Bullard, for Coach Darby Palmer, who is now the all-time leader, and we'll talk more about that. We want to say thanks for your time this time. Till next time, good night, all.